Hello again, uh, my fellow Jetty users. Welcome back to my workshop. And in this video, we are going to look at making complex switching arrangements for a light controller. Andrew writes to me that he has a Unilight controller. And what he wants to happen is that when he uh, moves the switch to turn his jet engine ECU to the run state, that the strobe switches on. And when he puts the flaps to the takeoff or landing position, it changes to the landing light. And just to complicate matters, he wants this only to happen when both the light's master switch is on and the gyro master is on. Well, if that's the way you want it, that's the way you want it. The adding in the gyro master is just another line in a logic switch, so that's easily enough accommodated. Now, there are some interesting wrinkles to this. The first is the desire for the uh, light system to switch to the strobe only at the point where you, in effect, move the trim up or move the enabling switch for the ECU. Um, and the other interesting wrinkle is that you are trying to get very specific travels for the strobe light and for the landing lights. The way these light controllers tend to work is they might have uh, half a dozen or eight or maybe more um, light sequences and you have to get the servo travel just right for it to switch on that particular sequence. And that precludes us simply using straightforward logic switch on the ECU run switch and the master light switch, for instance, because they just go from a logic switch from minus 100 to plus 100. Yes, I know you can set linear ones, but the switches or a trim position up on or off isn't a proportional control. And this leads us to another uh, big differentiation. We're after two particular, well, three particular servo travels, of course, because minus 100 for off, but then the, the two switched on points. Are they on either side of zero? In other words, is one of them a minus travel and the other one a positive travel? Or are they both on the same side? Are like both of them minus percents or both of them positive percents? That actually does have quite a bearing on uh, how easy it is to program. If they're on either side, one's a minus and one's a positive, that can be done so easily simply by using the dual rates. But if they're both on the same side, say both positive percentages, gets a bit more complicated. You can't use dual rates because you can't make V-shaped curves in the dual rates. So we're going to look at both variants and it'll require different model memory. So let's look first at the state where you're looking for a negative percentage travel for the strobe to come on when you um, enable the engine, and you're looking for a positive uh, travel value when you lower the flaps for the landing lights uh, value to come on. We'll take a look at the basic properties, oh, sorry, I should say the functions assignment, because uh, we've uh, got in here the lights, which are running off logic switch three at the moment, and we'll see what we're doing and why. And I've created a gyro master and a light master, gyro master there, and a lights master there, forward for on, back for off, okay? Now, at its absolute simplest, without wanting a, a gyro master and the lights master switch involved in this, if you simply wanted it to switch on when you uh, brought the trim value to enable the engine run and therefore go to the strobe lights, in lights, you could simply allocate the flap switch so that the takeoff and landing flaps would make it go to plus 100%. And then use the trim to enable different dual rates, non-symmetrical, to control the points. And it's as easy as that. 
So that's the basis of what we're going to do, modifying it simply to add in all the logic switches to take account of the gyro and light masters. Okay. Next, let's go in and create our logic switches. So the first logic switch that I've created is the gyro master and the light master switch using an AND value so that both of them need to come on, the output goes on. Okie doke. The next logic switch cascades off that, so when both of these are on, and then it takes the uh, control that you're using to put the turbine into its run condition. Now, Andrew happens to be using a switch. I've got a toggle switch here, so you could very easily just assign the toggle switch. I've gone for using the trim, just because a lot of people use the trim uh, to enable or disable the turbine, and I just wanted to show you how you get there. So let's go into it, clear it out. Choose a new one, come down to trim. That's the, the trim for the throttle, or should I say, the uh, trim on the left stick. As you can see, what these little crosses in circles are meant to be the sticks, and the little arrows underneath are at the side to show you which trim. So, trim 4, P4, so it's the up and down trim on the left stick, that's this one. So that's the one I want to select. And now, if I press the trim forward one click, comes on, back to neutral, goes off. There we go. So it'd be the same, or easier, obviously, in the switch. You just move the switch, but this is how you get to it, doing a trim. Turbine enabled, switch on. So as you can see, we can enable and disable it simply by turning the turbine on and off. Okay, and then finally, logic switch 3 cascades on from that yet again and adds in the flap switch set so that it's like this. So that takeoff and landing flap are switched on. Let's unreverse it, clear it out, clear that out. What you want to do is uh, put your flap switch to the takeoff position and move it to bizarrely, the normal flight position. That way you see it switches on in the normal flight position. We want the other two positions switched on, but when you do this sort of assigning, it only switches on one of the positions, not two of them. So all you do is press rev. So instead of being on, off, off, it'll be off, on, on. Watch. Bingo. And now it's on in takeoff, on in landing, on in takeoff, off in normal flight. Say OK. So now the only way to get the output from these cascading switches to be on is to switch on everything into position. So we need the lights master to be on. In fact, if I come out of here, you just have a look at the outputs of all of them. So the light master is on. Gyro master is on. That was on. The trim was off. So the trim turbine comes up now, and finally the flaps will switch on the third output. Now it's important that I've sequenced it this way around because there comes a point in setting up, I uh, can't remember if it's this one or the other version, where we need to pick off the fact that the two master switches are on and the trim is up, but not the flaps. Okay, so that, that's why I've sequenced it specially this way around. So if I need to, I can pick off logic switch 2 to switch something. Uh, whereas if I'd done it cascaded off the flaps, then the only way I could pick up the masters being on and the trim up would be to have the flaps down as well. So that's why it's sequenced that way. OK, let's go back to function assignment. The lights, the lights are now assigned to that third logic switch, the last of them. So it needs everything to be in the on position. So the lights master needs to be on, the gyro master needs to be on. Uh, if you're using a switch to switch the turbine on, turbine on, but I'm using the trim because I demonstrated how you can get the trim as well. So trim comes on. And finally, uh, the flaps to a takeoff or landing position there, and it switches on. So far, so good. Okay. 
Next, we want to go to the dual rate screen. Because this actually allows all sorts of uh, tricks. And in the dual rate screen for the lights, we assign the second logic switch. That's why I wanted to be able to pick this off. Uh, so the second logic switch, if you remember, is the two master switches on and the trim or the turbine switch in the run position. So at the moment, all three must be switched on. If I switch off the lights master, it goes off. If I switch off the gyro master, it goes off. And if I bring the trim back to turbine off position, logic switch goes off. OK, so that's what's operating this one. And as you can see, uh, we get the difference between switch off position one, switch on position two, and we get different curves. So with uh, the turbine in the off position, <clears throat> the switch doesn't come on. And therefore, the servo position will be at this end of the curve. And what we want to do then if we switch it on, is bring that end of the curve up to whatever travel value we need for the strobes to come on. So I'll move that. There we go. And you do that by coming up to the rate and having symmetry switched off. See, if I choose that at the moment and try and alter them, it alters both. But if you switch off symmetry, I move over here and I can move that point entirely on its own. So let's say, for example, that the minus 25% is the point at which the lights controller switches on the strobes. That's the point we'll set. So uh, should any of these switches fail, or oh, sorry, you move it to the logic failed condition i don't mean the switch itself fails but the logic switch the logic fails i.e switch it off switch it off or trim back to turbine off you're taking the output to minus 100 uh, percent here it is number eight so let's switch is on trim forward minus 25 percent flap can work here's the main point all of these will take it to minus 100%. Minus 100%. And we're going to uh, pretend that, for the purpose of this demonstration, that when the flaps are down, the uh, value that you want at the servo output is plus 75%. Okay. So uh, we move the control with the trim back, nothing will happen. I've got the two masters on, but the turbine is switched off. So turbine on, I can switch between the plus 75 for landing lights or the minus 25 for just the strobe light. But if I bring the trim back, so the turbine is off, it's locked at minus 100, isn't going to move. And the reason for all that is, if you remember, we assigned logic switch 3 to the lights. So that simply won't switch unless both masters are forward, turbine's brought to the run condition, now it can switch. Okay. And the way we got it to 75% was, again, just through the rate, using non-symmetrical, so we can go in and adjust that one alone to the value we want. So that is how you can do it with all these preconditions built in and get the exact output value that you want, where one of them is a negative value, and one of them is a positive value. So now let's move on to the more complicated programming where you want both of them to be a positive value. Oh, if only we could turn that rate up above zero, but we can't uh, for obvious reasons. I suppose it's obvious in a way it won't go. Okay.
Um, so we have to come up with a different and therefore more complex way to cope when we need two positives or two negative values. Right, let's look at building up the logic switches again. Pretty much the same thing. Uh, we have the two master switches there, so that if they come on, SF and SH, uh, the output from that cascades along with the trim to give you logic switch two, and the output from that cascades down then to the flaps. Same thing again. Okay, so uh, logic switch two means that everything in uh, masters are on and turbine in the run condition. Logic switch three means that masters, turbine, and flaps are in the position for that. So we'd use that to say, go for the strobe light switch on and three for the landing light position. But this time we have to do things differently around because let's say we're aiming for uh, the light switches on, the strobe light switch on at plus 30% and the uh, landing lights come on at plus 70 percent okay so we have to change the way we we're doing things a little bit uh, if we look at the functions assignment the lights this time instead of being uh, controlled by everything and the um, masters and turbine affecting the dual rate we're doing it the other way around this time the masters and turbine which is logic switch two, becomes the control for the light, and its masters and turbine and flaps will operate the dual rate. Okie dokie. So masters on, turbine on, the light goes to the on position. Let's switch those off. Now let's have a look in our dual rate. Come to the light. Okay. And... Um, it, this time, as I said, its logic switch is uh, when everything is on. Come on, focus. I hope it's not been out of focus all this time. It would be most annoying if it has. So we've again created a non-symmetrical curve. So minus 100 for the off position and plus 30% on that side as the on position. Ignore the switch at the moment. Okay, we're in position one, which is uh, something is switched off. So we'll switch on the master light, we'll switch on master gyro, and we'll bring the uh, turbine trim or switch up to the run position. That will switch on logic switch two, which is controlling the lights. So the light will because this is the light uh, dual rate, we'll try to go from that end of the curve to that end of the curve, which, as you can see, we've set as plus 30%. Can you see the little... Yeah, there we go. And if we have a look at the servo, so we can go from off to plus 30. OK. And if we switch off any of the master switches, it goes back to the minus 100. Let's bring it back there. OK. But we've set a dual rate. This time, using logic switch three, which was everything switched on, and the flaps. Why not just set the switch to the flap? Well, uh, you could end up how the flap will be operating the uh, switch, even the position, even when the masters are off, which you don't want. So that's why it's cascaded off the end of everything. So when we switch logic switch three on, which means all masters are on, turbine brought to the run state, then now if I move the flap to a takeoff or landing position, logic switch 3 will switch on, which means we get a second dual rate curve. And there we go. The end point now is 70 instead of 30. And now we can see that everything's switched off. The lights are at the off position. I'll operate the flap switch. Has no effect. I'll bring the turbine up to the run condition. No. Operate the flaps. No. What we need is the lights master on, gyro master on, 
turbine up to run condition. There we go, we got 30% for the uh, strobe light. And any of the flat positions will now invoke the landing light position. Just to prove, this will take the turbine back to the off position. So everything's gone off. And I'll now move the flaps down. So the flaps will work, but the light won't come on because the turbine's not on. So there you go. There's the two ways of doing it all. Have fun with that.